This video will be about what settings to use for your Simicube Direct Drive Wheel in iRacing. The first thing you want to do is go to My Documents, iRacing, and then you open the app.ini with Notepad. The settings in here will also be displayed in the video description, so you can copy them. The first thing is turn this to 1. And then if you're I in iRacing, uh, this, these are the settings you want to use. Enable force feedback, you want to use linear mode. And if you have changed the thing I just showed you in the app.ini, you will see newton meters. The way this works in iRacing is, uh, let's say you have a small meet, it which is 20 newton meters. Uh, if you put it on 20, it should be 1 to 1, so it will be very, very strong. The higher you put it, I have it on 50, the, the weaker the feedback gets. Uh, at 50 it's still uh, properly strong so yeah and you can adjust it per car uh, you definitely don't want to use any min force on a direct drive wheel because it's totally linear and has no dead zone and I myself I'll, I never use damping in games so I always have it off uh, you want to calibrate the wheel to 900 degrees in iRacing and the way to do this is turn it all the way left push it through the bump stop move it to the right all the way and push it through the bump stop so you get the full range of the wheel if you don't do it y you might be off by a few then you just turn it to the center press ok I'm doing this with one hand so it may be difficult uh, you put it on n you turn it to the left and you put it on 900 degrees and then it's calibrated correctly and then your wheel should be moving uh, the same as you are uh, the way iRacing works, uh, the wheel is on 900 degrees uh, wheel range, but yeah, the race cars, the the most of them have a lower wheel range, and iRacing will uh, change it according to what every real car has. So it will be one to one, and you don't have to change anything. There's only one small problem with this: uh, it won't use the bump stops from your SimiCube settings, so there's no damping in it, or yeah, it it ramps up way too uh, too harsh so you want to change uh, an option so you want to change the steering bump stop degree to 180 degrees it seems extreme but it works if you don't do this and you'll have like an extreme oversteer situation uh, and you have to turn your wheel to the max lock uh, while sliding it will bounce very aggressively off the bump stop and this fixes that and yeah, if you don't do it, it, it will ruin your catch uh, I'll include a video which demonstrates it and also that link will be in the video description since a direct drive wheel is so strong even with 50 newton meters which is a pretty sensible setting uh, it won't work properly when you spawn with your car in the pits the wheel will shake and oscillate like crazy because the, the physics don't work at low speed in order to fix this you want to turn on dampen oscillation and that goes over all these functions the default settings for this function are not that good for a direct drive wheel so I have custom ones they will be in the app.ini which is in the video uh, description so you can easily copy them the damping doesn't seem to do anything at all in this function uh, it might interfere with your normal driving so to be sure I turned all of them off you don't want any dampening because if you get oversteer your wheel gets slow and it will be harder to catch the slide so that's why I, I generally never use any dampening in, in any game this is basically the thing that does the trick steering force parked percentage I put it on 025 which means like uh, you have one fourth of your total feedback strength when you're parked and this fixes the oscillation by default it's on 0 0.5 but then it still oscillates so I put it a bit lower so this is a good starting point you can still tweak it a bit if you want those are basically all the settings you want to change in your app.ini you want to do this when the game is closed so then you do all the settings I just told or copy them from the app.ini which is included in the video description 
so you change all the settings and then you press file and save and then you launch the game so by now you're basically good to go I'll go over my Simicube settings now you put the steering range on 900 degrees just like in the game the bump stop is done by the game but here you can see my settings anyway the strength you wanna put on a uh, hundred percent and accordingly uh, change it uh, in game with the uh, max force for the arcon filter the reconstruction filter uh, you wanna use like one to five uh, as low as possible uh, and then you choose yourself if it's smooth enough but you really don't want to go above five it, it will just become slow and sluggish and you will start to lose lap time so you want to keep it as low as possible and three is a good uh, starting point the torque band limit i have at a thousand hertz which is possible now with the new ioni firmware if you have a lower one use 680 uh, but I like a thousand at the moment it makes it a bit sharper uh, the moment when the, the rear br breaks loose you can feel it better in my opinion the higher you put it uh, yeah, the smoother the force feedback gets so you can try what you like but thousand is a, a good uh, starting point uh, basically you see I use no filtering and damping at all as I said before it just messes with uh, the feel with the car for me um, no direct input effects either this is basically uh, it now you should be able to uh, do some uh, nice driving in iRacing I hope you enjoy the settings and thanks for watching guys